Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will create an account class in Java. Let's get started. This is the account class diagram. So the class is called account. We have a private attribute which is called ID and it is an integer. We also have a private attribute that is called balance and it is a double. This balance will represent the amount of money inside the account. After that, we have a private attribute which is called annual interest rate and this is a double. And finally, we have a private attribute which is called date created and it is of type date. Inside Java, we have a date class that is used to create date objects. A date object will contain information about the date and time, all right? Now let's have a look at some methods. We only have one constructor and it takes three parameters, one integer and two doubles. So it is obvious that the integer is the value for the ID, the first double is the value for the balance, and the second double is the value for the annual interest rate. All right. After that, we have a public method that is called withdraw and it takes a double as a parameter and it returns a boolean. So what does this method do? As you see, it is called withdraw. So we will try to withdraw some amount from the account. So we will take this parameter that is passed over here and we will subtract its value from the balance. Of course, we must make sure that this account contains enough balance. We cannot have a negative balance, all right? So if we are able to make a withdraw, then we will return true. And if we weren't able to make a withdraw, we will return false. In other words, if the amount to be withdrawn is greater than the balance, then we will return false. But if the balance is greater than the amount to be withdrawn, then we will update the balance and return true. Now let's have a look at this method. It is a public method that is called deposit and it also takes a double. And as you can see, it doesn't return anything. So this method will take the amount that is passed as a parameter and add it to the balance. And finally, we want to create all the getters and the setters for the attributes. But notice that we don't want to create a set date created method. So we don't want whoever uses our class to change the value of the date created attribute after the account has been created, all right? And notice that the constructor doesn't receive a value for the date created. So this attribute over here will be instantiated once inside the constructor and it will contain the current date and time when the account was created. So pause the video and they try to implement this class. So now let's go to IntelliJ. So this is the same project as before. Let me open this panel over here and we want to create a new class. So right click over here and go to new Java class. This class is called account. Now press enter and as you see, the class is created. So let's get started. We will start by creating the four attributes. So we have a private integer ID. We have a private double balance. We also have a private double annual interest rate. Okay. And finally, we have a private date. And as you can see, we have a date class in java.util and you are going to use this class. So press enter and the class will be imported at the top of the file, as you can see over here. So this is a private attribute of type date and it is called date created like this. These are all the attributes. Now let's implement the constructor. So it is a public method that is called account and it takes three parameters, the integer ID, the double balance, and finally the double annual interest rate. Now inside this constructor, we will assign the attribute ID to the parameter ID. We will assign the attribute balance to the parameter balance. And finally, we will assign the attribute annual interest rate to the parameter. Now remember that we need to instantiate the date created object and we will do it inside the constructor also. The idea over here is that the value of the date created is not passed by the user. So if you do some research, you will find that when we instantiate a date object, it will contain some default values for the current date and time. So let's do that. I will assign the date created attribute to be equal to a new date like this. When this statement is executed, our attribute date created will contain the current date and time. We can access them normally using the dot operator. Let me show you. Over here, I will say date created and let's use the dot operator and let's type get. As you can see, we can get the time, get the date, get the day, the hours, the minutes, the month, etc. In our case, we are going to use the toString method in order to get a string representation of the date and time. At this point, we are not interested in totally understanding the date class. So let's continue. Let me zoom out a little bit so that all the code appears. Now let's create the withdraw method. It is a public method that returns a boolean. It is called withdraw and it receives a double amount like this. Inside this method, we want to try to withdraw this amount from the balance. So first of all, we must check if the balance is greater than the amount. 
If this is true, we are able to deduct the amount from the balance. So inside this statement, let's remove the amount from the balance. So balance minus equals the amount. And after that, we will return true because the operation is successful. And outside the if statement, if we reach this point, this means that this condition over here is false. So this return statement was not executed, so we reached this point. So over here we want to say that the operation was not successful, so we will return false. Now this code can be written another way. Let me show you. Now before we continue, over here we should say the balance is greater than or equal to amount. So over here we are supposing that if the balance is greater than or if it is equal to the amount, then we will be able to withdraw it. Now let me show you the other way. Over here we will test if the balance is less than the amount. If this is true, this means that we cannot do the withdraw operation. In this case, we will return false. Alright? Now, if this condition is false, we will reach this point over here. Because the return false will not be executed. So let's subtract the amount from the balance, like this. And after that, we will return true. Okay? So you can choose whatever way you want. In this case, I will keep the code that we wrote just now. In both cases, we have the same thing. Now let's implement the deposit method. So over here, it is a public method and it doesn't return anything. It's called deposit and it takes a double amount as a parameter. And inside this method, we simply want to add the amount to the balance. So we will say balance plus equals the amount. And this is it. Finally, let's create the getters and the setters. So choose getter and setter and you want all the getters and the setters. Let's create them and we want to remove the setter for the date created. Here it is, so let's remove it. And this is our class. In the next video, we will write a program in order to use this class. So this is it, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.